conquer your fears. Fear is not real. It is an illusion, a false belief. The only breath that it has is the breath we give it. Now, in order to conquer your fears, we need to go through a series of steps first. Number one, understanding how fear works. To fully understand how fear works, we need to first go through the science behind fear. How fear actually works. Fear comes from the brain. Whenever someone encounters something that frightens them, the hypothalamus in the brain reacts by releasing a series of chemicals to the sympathetic nervous system and the adrenal cortical system. The brain essentially sets off an alarm, and that alarm is called the amygdala. This alarm is designed to alert us of potential danger as the fight or flight response. However, the alarm is not rational. It cannot tell the difference between you being attacked by someone or you needing to finish a project for a deadline. There is nothing logical about it, but it is linked to danger. At the same time, the adrenal cortical system is also secreting hormones to the other parts of your body, which instigates changes in the body to occur. Other systems shut off, such as the immune system and the digestion system, to allow more energy to go towards emergency functions. Veins in the skin constrict, keeps blood in major muscle groups, and it's difficult to focus on small tasks since the brain is preoccupied with fear. This is known as the fight or flight response. Number two, the benefits of fear. Humans and animals use fear as a survival tactic to avoid dangerous situations. If you avoid those dangerous situations, you have a higher chance to survive. With natural selection, organisms that have adapted to the environment are more likely to survive and pass on those genes to the next generation. Thus, since fear has helped them survive those deadly and dangerous situations, their genes and their offspring will also have their traits of fear within those dangerous circumstances, which will help them survive as well in the future. So as a matter of a fact, fear has actually been beneficial for us in the past. Fear has been beneficial for other organisms and animals in the past as well. For example, if you're afraid of going down an alley at 1am in the morning because you're gonna get kidnapped, good! You probably shouldn't be walking down that alley at 1am in the morning because you might get kidnapped. As previously mentioned, that's why we went through the science of fear. The alarm that sets up the emotion of fear is not rational. It cannot tell the difference between you getting attacked and you having to speak in front of a crowd. Nowadays, most of our fears are not the same fears that our ancestors had in the past. They are no longer dangerous or deadly. Our fears have become afraid of public speaking, afraid of humiliation, afraid of failure, afraid of exams and tests, afraid of studying. Our fears have no longer become deadly. Our fears have no longer become dangerous, but it is something minuscule in the eyes of our ancestors. Now that you understand how fear works, we need to understand the different types of fear that our society faces today. In order to overcome your fears, you first need to identify the types of fears that people have, that you have. There is no cure if there is no diagnosis. So in order to find a cure, we need to get the root of the problem. Thus, I call this the seven fear archetypes. Number one, the procrastinator, AKA the perfectionist. This person is afraid of making the wrong choice. A perfectionist. You spend a lot of time doing research and always tweaking things until the last minute because you want to make sure everything is so perfect. You hate making mistakes, but then that shows up as a fear of commitment or a fear of getting started. Number two, the people pleaser. You have a fear of letting people down or afraid of being judged. You care a lot about what other people think about you. You struggle with setting boundaries and even saying no. And you don't want to start a conflict with anyone even if people are taking advantage of you or if you're getting annoyed or they've made you upset because you don't want to start an argument with them or get anybody mad. Number three, the rule follower. You are afraid of taking risks and you are afraid of standing out from the crowd. So you follow the rest of the crowd. Number four, the outcast. You protect yourself by appearing like you don't care what anybody else thinks. But in reality, you care a lot about what other people think about you and how people judge you. But that is why you reject people first and push away people first before they can reject you. Leaving yourself in isolation most of the time. Number five, the self-doubter. You struggle with a lot of insecurities. There's a fear inside of you of not being capable or not being enough. And you believe that you are not enough. Number six, the excuse maker. You struggle sharing your own opinion because you are afraid of being held accountable or held responsible if anything else goes wrong. For example, you're that one friend that hates picking where to choose to eat because you don't want to get blamed if people don't like it. And number seven, the pessimist. This is for those that have already experienced a lot of pain in the past. You're afraid of getting hurt again, so you close yourself off and almost give up so that you can protect yourself from getting hurt once again. This is the hardest one to work through out of the seven fear archetypes, but most of the time, it's usually temporary. And now that we got all of that out of the way, let's talk about the solution. Remember, these archetypes determine the types of fears that people face in today's society. These fears restrict you from doing the things that you want to do. And now that we figured out the diagnosis and figured out the root cause of the problem, now we can find the solution for that problem. Remember this, all these fears happen subconsciously beneath the surface. We don't actually know what's going on, but we experience it as truth 
we believe to ourselves that that is the truth that's going on in our lives. Remember this, the alarm that the brain sets off is not rational. You cannot tell the difference between you getting attacked and you needing to finish a final project. Our brains have processed the fear of failure as equivalent to the fear of death. But the minute that you can start to identify and understand how your fear is showing up is the minute that you can start to do something about it. This simple act can simply change your thought patterns and your behaviors. Because when you shine a light on a fear, it's not so scary anymore. Fear is not real. It is an illusion. The only breath it has is the breath that we give it. Fear is something that will hold you back. But if you shine a light on that fear, you'll be able to conquer it and you will be victorious. With that being said, don't forget to like and subscribe to The Journey TV. If you found this video motivational and inspiring, don't forget it to share it with everybody else. We need more motivation in this world. And remember this, together, we'll make it to the top. Easy.